One of my nicer LiPo batteries was ruined recently in a crash. Um, the battery itself isn't ruined. The balance connector on the other end, though, got broken off and some of the wires touched, which caused it to short out, which melted off other wires, and it's a whole mess. But the battery voltage is still reading within a normal range, and each of the cells checks out within a normal range. So I should be able to salvage this battery. I just need to attach some new balance leads and a new balance connector to it. Unfortunately, I don't have any 4-cell balance plugs lying around, so I'm going to take apart uh, one of my old batteries with a dead cell and salvage the connector from that. So, uh, I'll just go through the process of taking apart one of these batteries and how to do it safely without shorting anything out or worrying about the battery catching on fire on you. But it's always good to have some sort of safety measure around, so I have this big um, MC box. Uh, ideally this should be full of sand or something that I can throw a battery into if it happens to go up in smoke to prevent it from burning down uh, my apartment. So I guess I'll get started. First thing you'll want to do when taking apart a battery is identify which of the cells are bad. So you can do that just by checking the voltage across the different terminals here on the balance connector. So that one's fine. That cell's fine. That cell's fine. So it must be this last cell over here. And yep, that one's definitely dead. So I'm just going to take a sharpie here, and I'll mark which two terminals on the plug that is. So that on here happens to be this black wire and this yellow wire. So now when I'm taking this apart, uh, I know which cell's bad, so which one I can get rid of. And that'll just prevent me from getting rid of any of the good cells. Battery, I highly recommend using some sort of non-metallic cutting tool. So I just have this uh, ceramic tip craft knife, which works well enough for cutting through the cardboard and the plastic around the battery, but isn't conductive so I don't have to worry about shorting anything out on the inside. So to do that you'll just want to cut through this foam padding or foam tape on the top of the battery. Uh, being sure not to cut in too deep because you might hit the ends of the battery. Um, you really have to go pretty deep to get past the wires and worry about damaging the actual cells, but it's best to be on the side of caution than to puncture one of the cells. Alright, so that's what the inside of our battery looks like. These are those metal tabs that I was talking about where our balance lead are attached, and um, there's one on the opposite side of the battery as well where our plus and minus leads are attached. There's a whole bunch of Kapton tape over the connections to prevent them from shorting out and to hold them in place, and then some foam padding uh, just to protect everything from getting smashed if you hit one of the batteries. So I don't want to peel off the rest of the plastic casing on this battery because it's a donor battery, so I don't really care uh, about the casing around it. Just get that all peeled off. There we go. So these are our four cells. Um, this one down here at the end with our black and yellow leads connected to it is our bad cell. So that's the one we'll want to be removing. And then these other three ones should be good for repurposing. Since the main goal of this for me is just to extract this balance connector, I'll start by doing that. So luckily there's this little foam tab here on my battery that I can use to cover up one of these tabs while I try and desolder the other one. I just want to try and minimize the amount of exposed metal as much as possible when I'm working on this just to prevent any sort of short. Uh, especially with the soldering iron, which is electrically conductive, it can uh, get pretty messy if you accidentally touch the two wrong points together. Alright, so there's two, those two wires undone. Now comes the tricky part of getting the wires off on this end. So this is where they touch both the plus and minus leads. So just carefully cut through here, making sure not to go into the cell. And there's that. We're going in for this. And there we go. So there's the balance connector removed from the battery. Uh, I did forget to mark which cell was the bad one on the battery itself, but luckily I remember where this plug was, so I can just 
put some sharpie on that so that way I know which one's bad or you can also measure the voltage on it afterwards after getting this whole battery apart. So now comes the tricky part of getting these cells separated from each other. Gift card here that I'll be using to separate the cells just so I don't puncture any of them. So I kind of want to get in there and slowly rock it back and forth so you can kind of feel it cutting through the glue and give it an occasional pull just to see if it's loosened up at all. Now you can see that this top cell is deforming a bit and this is because it's a bad cell. Um, so you'll want to try and prevent that from happening when removing the good cells. Just peeling very carefully and there we go. So now this will have only one tab connected because it's an end cell. Um, so these tabs here are crimped together and on all of the batteries that I've taken apart they've been crimped together so I assume that that's how they're like on all batteries so you can't desolder that you'll need to actually snip it so this is one of the few times where you'll need an actual metal tool in here uh, so you have to be very careful with it just make sure to peel that off and just sort of snip right where these connect making sure not to touch anything else and there we go so if I were to measure the voltage across that yep so about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts which is what we were getting before. So this one's definitely our dead one, and we'll put this to the side for now. I'm just going to go through the same process now to separate these good cells, so that way I can reuse them in the future. Alright, so I got these cells all taped up. So that way, all of the positive pins are covered, so there's no risk of them shorting out. And then I've done the same on the bad cell, and just made sure I labeled it, so that way I can safely dispose of it later. So now it's time to get on to the real purpose of this, uh, which is to replace the dead balance leads in here. Um, so I'm going to be a bit more careful taking this battery apart, just because I don't want to completely destroy the shrink wrap around it and um, it looks like it's put together a little bit better, so getting to those wires might be a little bit harder, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So you can see that this battery is built a little bit better than the last battery. Um, it is definitely a nicer battery, and you can see that in the build quality. All right, so that's where our red wire is going to go. We'll just match up and go along row by row. I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but one of the things you need to check on your balance plug before you start attaching it to the battery is how long the wires are. So this isn't really too much of a problem if you have a longer lead, because you can always just cut things down to size. But with these one, the balance lead is already pretty short, so it's best to note these. So see how these two legs come out further than the others? That means that they're connecting to the back of the battery, like this. See how everything kind of lines up that way? So on the original battery, the balance plug came out this way, but these leads don't line up that way, so I'll have to put the balance plug back on this way so that everything lines up nicely, and I don't end up with any weird bulgy wires that could get caught in the props. So I guess the first thing that I should actually do before patching this battery up is make sure that I wired this balance connector properly. Uh, so to do that, it's actually fairly simple. I'm just going to hook it up to my multimeter and test out each of these balance ports like before. And if any of them read a very low voltage or a very high voltage, then I'll know that I screwed something up. So this first cell here with our positive, 3.7, that's good. Next cell. 36, that's good. Cell 37, and our last cell 36. So, that means that everything's wired up properly, so I don't have to worry about that being an issue, and I can finish closing off the battery with some fresh Kapton tape and then get all of this foam back in place. And there it is. Uh, definitely lost some style points, 
uh, but I used caps on tape everywhere else. I just didn't have any thick enough stuff for it to really be worth it to go around the top. And as long as this battery works, then I don't really care how it looks. So I'm just going to pop it on the balance charger now, make sure that everything there works out fine, and then I can call this successfully repaired. Just as a little bonus, I figured I'd go over how to uh, replace a cell on a battery. So I have these cells over here, which are the known good ones. I took out of the last battery I just took apart. Then I have this battery here where this cell down at the end is bad, most likely because it looks like it got damaged there. Uh, so I'm surprised that this cell isn't also bad, but its voltage is reading fine, so we'll leave it as it is for now. So I'm just going to remove this cell and then transplant in one of these guys uh, just to get this back in working condition. Now this isn't ideal. Luckily these were the same uh, brand name batteries, so these shell cells should be somewhat close to each other um, when compared with those ones. But uh, really there's, there's no telling how well that these cells are going to balance with the new one in there because they're from different batches and all sorts of things. And I'm sure that when these batteries are built they go through and match the internal resistance of each cell uh, just to get something the closest. So one good thing, something you don't have to worry about too much, is that if one of these wires from the balance plug that's been disconnected touches the wrong spot, uh, then nothing is going to happen because none of these wires are touching each other within the balance plug. But that being said, you wouldn't want if this had a large area of metal exposed to be flopping around where it could potentially short out two different connections. But if this just hits somewhere, then it's not going to do any damage to the battery or the plug or really anything. And we can separate off this bad cell. So I'll just do the same thing I did with the other one. Uh, mark it out plus and minus and label it as bad. Then we can take one of our good cells and start trying to replace this. So I know this is a mess that this is our minus uh, for the main battery and this black plug here is also our negative so our negative will be attached to those and left by itself and then our positive will attach to this cell here and we'll have this yellow lead attached to it as well. Now soldering battery, t battery tabs isn't exactly easy. Um, I forget what material these are made out of but it's not something that's normally very easy to solder so um, I'll just try and fumble my way through this and hopefully I can figure out a good method. That actually seems to have stuck pretty well. Um, I didn't expect it to, and I wouldn't expect it to if you're trying this out. Um, I'll have to look up a proper method for soldering battery tabs. Uh, there might not even be a way to do it, hence why all of these were crimped together. And then maybe the solder stick sticks better once there's the dots from crimping. But for now, this seems to have made a good enough joint for me. I can't pull these apart with my hand. Um, so, I'm just going to start reattaching wires, and then we'll go from there. So there it is, all taped up and back together. Let's uh, label it so I can tell what it is. And I guess now's the moment of truth. I probably should have checked it before reattaching everything, but let's just make sure that those cells are in properly. So this was our questionable shell cell that we just replaced, and we're getting 4 volts out of it, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1. I suppose at this point it's also probably best to mention that you should really be discharging the battery to uh, at least storage capacity before doing this. I kind of neglected that step and it worked out well for me this time, but if you do make any mistakes it's best to have as little juice in the batteries as possible, so I do highly recommend that. So once this other battery, um, the other one that we fixed before, finishes up on the balance charger, then I'll throw this guy on there and uh, we'll, we'll see how this does. Alright, so both of our batteries are off the charger now, um, I'm just going to double check their voltages, make sure everything's fine. 
This one I'm not really too worried about the voltages because I know that the cells are good. I just want to make sure that I have the balance connector hooked up the right way. So 1675, that's fine. And then I'll just run through each of these cells here. If I can grab onto the plug, there we go. So here's our first cell. 419, good. 418, good. Good. And here's the cell that we replugged in, so 417. So, tiny bit lower, but uh, I think that that's just an issue with the balancing and not, not any sort of real issue with the battery. So here's the one that we replaced the cell on. Um, 16.8, so that's fine. Uh, let's go through here. So first cell, 418, 420, 418. Here's the cell that we replaced, 418. So it looks like it's actually more balanced than this second cell here. So um, I'll let this sit for a little bit. Maybe I'll see if I can find some way to discharge it just to make sure that everything discharges evenly. But um, until I get proven otherwise, I'm going to say that this battery is good to go. And I'm going to try flying with it at some point.